all right peace to you ladies and gentlemen how are you now in today's video i want to talk about what characteristics uh what what characteristics compose the quote-unquote alpha male now i know you guys uh already understand that i've developed a a kind of triggered uh hating repulsion reaction towards this word of alpha male because people abuse it and throw it around and they they like to flatter themselves with that term and it's, it's become so perverted and toxic especially in the red pill manosphere quote-unquote realm and I, I hate it i hate it but I'm, I'm using it to kind of counter signal these people and to put out into the world what my understanding is of the true masculine alpha male the the peak male or the overman whatever you want to call him the man who is at peak masculinity the one who and i'm, I'm deriving all of these qualities from the scriptures and what i think just like i said what makes the best man and the first and most important thing, every single alpha male, without fail, without fail, is guided by a transcendent, this is the first point, he is guided by a transcendental philosophy. Now what I mean by that is that his goal, whatever it may be in his life, he is guided by, his guiding principle is a faith that is fundamentally above himself and his carnal pleasures and his carnal des desires, okay? It is above himself in um, satiating and gratifying his own ego and his own, like I said, his base desires. He is guided by principle, purpose, conviction, and faith. That is the first and indispensable principle of an alpha male. That is how he is. And you see guys on the internet like uh, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, all these red pill, manosphere dudes, they completely and utterly fail in that. That's all they care for. That's all they gloat about. That's all they boast about is how much carnal pleasure they have. You know, Andrew Tate is talking about all the, the beautiful women he has in his, his Lamborghini while he's riding around and all the money he has. Well, in my estimation and the scriptural estimation, the alpha male is somebody who is guided by transcendental principles that are far above himself. He is guided by purpose and reason, not by base appetites. So that is the first thing. The second point is, and this is absolutely related to the first one, is that the alpha male or the overman or whatever you want to call him, he has an unwavering faith in God. He has an unwavering faith in the Most High and his head is always pointing upwards. He's always pointing at the Most High. He is always looking at the Most High, the source. He is always looking at his God, the one God who he looks towards for guidance and mercy and strength and inspiration. And he's not guided by emotions. He's not guided by, you know, he, he instead he, he's led by faith. And this goes right back to the first point I said about the principles. The, the alpha male, the strong man, he's always looking upwards and he has an unwavering faith in God. His strength comes from the Most High. His strength comes from the Most High and he's, like I said, guided by principle. He's always looking to God. And there, there is no such thing. Never in the history of mankind has there ever been an atheist alpha male. Absolutely impossible. It's just a complete contradiction in terms. Because masculinity comes from God altogether. Masculinity is supposed to represent strength and the ability to endure and the ability to be patient and the ability to, you know, just be a, a, a strong, formidable man. And this always comes from God. These things come from God. They cannot come from ourselves. So that is the second point. The alpha male always and invariably has a strong, bulletproof, wavering, um, unwavering faith in the Most High. Next point I can agree with the red pill guys on is, this is a short point, is that the alpha male, he definitely takes care of his body. In whatever avenue that may express itself, whether he goes on runs, and I'm not saying he has to be big and jacked and ripped and have these guns hugging the sleeve. That's not necessarily... Um, required to be an alpha male. That's not required to be a, a masculine man, although, you know, these things are nice. Really, what I mean is a healthy body, a functional body, a functional body that gets used and pushed to its limit frequently, whether that be through going on runs, whether that means through exercising, whether that means through, let's say, if you're in that kind of situation working on a farm, whether that means through dancing or playing soccer, whatever it is, a, a, a body that is not abused through its misuse and neglect. And, you know, he eats a healthy diet, he fasts regularly, he stays away from drugs, he stays away from alcohol. The body which God has given him, he honors it and he uses it and he has a slim, trim, fit body. Once again, not saying necessarily ripped six-pack abs and all that stuff. That's a more of a hobby. That's more of a kind of 
that, that those are like extracurriculars. You don't really need that. Really, he just, like I said, he needs to be slim, athletic, trim, fit, healthy, just takes care of himself. He treats well the body, which is a blessing that God has given him, and he, he does it justice. Point number three was the body, and point number four is an alpha male does his duty and does not expect to be praised for it. Whatever his duty is, whether it's towards his, let's say he has a family, he has a wife, he has children, he takes care of his children, he takes care of his wife, he provides for them, he puts a shelter over their head. Well, really, it's God who puts shelter over their head, but uh, God uses him to put shelter over their head, food in their mouth. He doesn't expect, of course, you know, you, you get a respect and appreciation for the, the work that you do. But ultimately, he doesn't expect praise for it. These things like taking care of his children, taking care of his progeny, taking care of his wife, you know, just being that masculine figure in his family's life, providing for them by the leave of God. These are done without the uh, need for receiving praise back from them. They're done simply because they're duty. And he does everything from a sense of duty, the alpha male. And, you know, whether, whatever it is, like even, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that I'm the alpha male, because really, all, all of these points which I'm giving you, they're principles, and um, nobody can ever achieve them perfectly. Nobody can ever be that absolute alpha male, but we can try our best to achieve. It's basically, how can we, it, it, what, what the goal is, is we're trying to model our life to, as best as we can, follow these principles. We're trying our best to follow these principles as consistently as possible. And the more consistently you follow these principles, which, which I'm laying out, the more consistently you're an alpha male. The more you fall away from those points, the less of an alpha male you become. And even myself, I have to improve. I don't follow these things perfectly. You don't follow these things perfectly, but we all have to increase ourselves and, and make these principles consistent in our lives. But like I was saying, he is led by a sense of duty. And I was giving you an example of my book. You know, I'm writing the Flat Earth Manifesto right now. I don't care uh, if, if people praise me for it. I don't care if really if people hate me for it. I'm doing it simply because I must. God has given me an understanding and an interest and a knowledge in this subject. He has guided me in this particular path and I felt duty bound and compelled to write this book. I felt like nobody else was going to do it. You know, a, a Quran alone, flat earth book, which touches on both the scriptures, which doesn't get into the hadith, which is just comprehensive, talks about the conspiracy, the philosophy, the physics, the science, the scriptures. That is what I wanted to do and I was led by a sense of duty. People are led in their sense of duty. Sam Garens, he felt like he had the uh, propensity towards languages and linguistics and whatnot, and he felt led towards writing his translation of the Quran. You know, people use their skills. Said Mirza, he's wrote a few books. We're all led by duty, and if you are led by duty and not seeking praise, then that is the most alpha trait to have regarding your, your goals and your ambitions. And you know, a, a lot of times you hear from Andrew Tay and these red pill guys that you can't care what people think about you. You can't care what think of, the people think about you. That is true. I do agree with them. However, that's only half the battle. We Yes, we cannot be swayed by criticism and let this criticism kind of a, a falter and, and deviate our course, which, whatever course that we've set for ourselves on our compass, whatever course that God has given us on our compass. But that's only half the battle. We can't let the criticisms cause us to falter, but we also can't let the praises cause us to falter. That's the other half of the battle. We are somewhat indifferent towards both. We're just doing our duty, our sense of duty, and we don't care what we get, whether it's to our family, whether it's to our loved ones, whether it's for our goals and our ambitions, whatever it is, we do it because of a sense of duty. We're guided to the straightness of the way. We do it because we must. There is a uh, kind of divine compelling within us. That, I feel like, is incredibly alpha, and I see that within the Quran. You know, we have examples of the messengers and the prophets. They said that I, I seek no reward from you at all. Uh, my reward is with the Most High. That to me is, is the most alpha and, and base statement. The next point is that, I don't know if this is number four or number five, but that the alpha male is patient. He is resilient. He is, is led by logic and reason as opposed to emotion and uh, hormonal fluctuations. He analyzes the situation for how it is and he applies the appropriate amount of severity to it. Whether it needs a lot, whether it needs a little, he's constantly thinking, 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 thinking what is the wisest move in a given scenario. He's contemplative. The alpha male is a, a patient man. And after that, and totally related to patience, is the alpha male is a kind man. Because of his fear of the Most High, because of his love of God, he is compelled. He feels led towards being kind and generous to people. He, he is not, um, I, I hate to use the word, but a dickhead or an asshole. 
He's somebody who people genuinely enjoy to talk to. Doesn't mean he compromises the truth. Doesn't mean he's nice. Doesn't mean he's he's a yes man. He stands firm upon his principles, but whenever he can be, he is definitely kind. He tries his best to be and to keep good and cordial professional relationships with people. That is an alpha move. After that, the point after that, which I've lost count, is that the alpha male is a humble man. A humble man with humility. And this again, it goes back to that first and you know. The, the, the guiding principle, the anchor of the alpha male, the root of his alphaness is that he, he's guided by transcendental philosophy and a belief in God. And with that belief in God, with that transcendental philosophy, if he is true to it and he follows it to its logical conclusion, then naturally he's going to become, as he progresses within that tradition, that mentality, that spirituality, quote unquote, he's going to become more humble. He's going to become a man with humility because he realizes that his strength fundamentally does not come from him. Whatever he is, Whatever virtues he has, it doesn't come from himself, it comes from God. And this goes back to what I said before. He's always looking up and he, he has humility. He's not boasting, he's not proud, he's not trying to show off, he, he doesn't have anything to prove. He feels like everything, and he understands that everything comes from God and he's consistently looking upwards for the blessings. And this again is a, another thing which I think a lot of the Red Pillar, Manosphere guys fail on. Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, they're very boastful, proud people. They think all of their uh, accomplishments come from them and they don't seem to remember that just as God gave them all of these things, God can also take it away. They're trying to show off to you, they're trying to flex to you. And I, I think that that denigrates, that takes away from whatever alphaness that they're trying to portray to the world. The alpha male is, is a man with humility and not virtue signaling humility, not a man who hasn't accomplished anything, who's weak and pathetic and he, he hides his weakness in this air of humility like just just because he doesn't do anything in his life. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about truly, hu truly humble, truly humble. Well, you know, he, he's a man who is accomplished. He's a man who gets a lot done. He's a man who is building something, but he doesn't let that get to his head. And he, like I said, he understands that everything comes from the most high. That is an alpha trait. The alpha male, which is the next trait I want to talk about, is a man who is consistently and always trying to improve himself. And he hates stagnation. He's somebody, if you see him, if you get to know him over the span of a year, over the span of two years, three years, five years, ten years, he seems like a person who... Um, the, the common normie, he's, he's going to mistake him for somebody who kind of doesn't have any stability. But it's not that he doesn't have any stability. He's constantly discarding that which is not profitable in his life. Actions, behaviors, thoughts, uh, um, habits, whatever it is. The alpha male consistently discards that which is not profitable. Whether it's actions or behaviors or habits or ideas, whatever it is. He discards if it doesn't work for him. And he keeps it if it does work for him. And he seems like somebody who does not have any stability because he's changing you know yeah I, i've gotten told this a lot in my life will lead you change will lead you change no i'm not changing i just find out what works in life and what doesn't and i throw out what that which doesn't work and i try my best to keep that which does and i i believe the more somebody does that the more alpha they become absolutely you know this is absolutely what the tremendous tradition is about it's about improving ourselves consistently cauterizing the the nafs as it were the lower self the base self the the, the inner uh, carnal desires and pleasures, the pride, the ego, the boasting, all of these things, we discard them and we consistently try to improve ourselves through discipline, through discipline, through discipline, through right action, through prayer, through fasting. We try to purge that evil inside of us. And the alpha male is somebody who does not stagnate. He consistently and invariably moves upward, moves upward, moves upward. And you can see that over a linear progression of his life, whether you look at him through a year time span, a two year, a 10 year, he's always moving upwards. He's always moving upwards. He hates to sit still. Whereas most people, they just kind of, I mean, think about the majority of people in your life. They don't change. They, they stay the same. They do the same things. They stick to the same old, unprofitable, filthy rags that have never worked for them before, that have never cleaned anything, and they just continue to use them just out of habit, out of lack of consideration, out of not caring. I don't know what it is, but the alpha male is definitely not like that. And finally, the last point which I want to bring up is that the alpha male leads by example. He doesn't just talk the talk. He's not just chit-chatting all the time. He's not on a forum. He's not talking of whatever he, he, his goals are. He consistently leads by example. He shows the way. And people, they want to stay around him. And I'm not saying that the alpha male is decided by the, the, the opinions of the majority. Absolutely not. Definitely not. It's actually quite the opposite. But you know, the alpha male is the type of guy who... 
people they listen to him they, they they give him an ear they they heed his word they follow him they spend time with him they want to be around with him because n not because of any reason other than he is such a valuable person he brings so much value to the table he is such a blessing that he's irreplaceable he's non-dispensable you can't just you know throw him out and then get a new friend who's like him he truly is one of a kind and special and he naturally makes people quote unquote gravitate towards him oh I don't like that word as you know but Nonetheless, he, he brings people towards him. He brings his tribe and his crowd, and he inspires them. He lives the life he talks about. He's not a hypocrite. Wherever his mouth is, so is his heart, and so is his body, and so is his actions. And this goes back to what I said before, where the alpha male is guided by principle. And he doesn't talk the talk. Most people are talkers. They just say a lot of stuff. They tell you about their goals, but they're getting nowhere. They're getting nowhere. They're getting nothing done. They're just uh, flapping their lips and mentally masturbating and entertaining themselves. The alpha male gets things done and for the most part he's quite quiet to himself about his goals and the only time he lets his goals really out of his lips is to the most high asking the most high to help him accomplish whatever is in his mind, whatever his heart desires, of course within the law of God. That, that's when he lets out his goals but otherwise he's not telling people, he's not telling people. He's not trying to seek validation for that which he has not accomplished yet just by talking to people about it. He wants to go and get it done and he lets it out to God and God, if he wills, allows him to accomplish those very goals. That is alpha male behavior. But, you know, anyways, man, these are just a few points which I had going through my mind. I was watching a couple of videos of Andrew Tate. He's talking about himself like he's a big alpha male, big shot, movie star. He's the last man standing. And I know it's a lot of it is hyperbole. Don't come at me with that. But... The hyperbole, it does come from some level of truth. He does feel like he is the last vestige of manliness on earth, or one of the last vestiges of manliness on earth, him and his brother. And I definitely have criticisms of them both. And I do not think that they have reached the peak masculinity that they can. They, they fall short on quite a few issues. They're very carnal. They're very base. Not based. They're very base. They're very led by their appetites. They're boastful. They're not humble. And it's just... These things, they, they denigrate from their masculinity and their quote-unquote alphaness. And I don't want you men to be like that. I want you men to be better than these people. Just because they have a million followers, just because they have a million people that listen to them, doesn't mean that they're necessarily more alpha than the dude next to you. It doesn't mean that at all. Um, alphaness is a character trait. It's a character trait and it is a, a mindset and a, a personality that you develop within yourself over time, over time, over time. God puts it within you. God puts it within you. And... The ultimate example of that, of course, is the prophets and messengers that God talks about in his holy words. These were the peak alpha men, and I, I see the way that they live, at least how God describes it, is, is a lot different from these red pill manosphere guys like Andrew Tate. But anyways, men, that's really all I have to say on the matter. I hope this talk is a blessing. I gotta quickly go home, get my scooter, and then get to work as soon as possible because I decided to squeeze in this video which is right now taking up too much time. That's all I got to say. I hope this talk was a blessing. And yeah, peace to you. Remember, see the bounds, so keep your eyes wide open. Peace out. Assalamu alaikum, men. My name is Walid Naeem, and I have dedicated my entire life towards spreading the truth about the words of God. And I don't know about you, but personally, I have grown sick and tired of all these mainstream religions, and specifically the mosques, which have utterly failed us. I'm fed up with them placing the words of man, specifically their fabricated hadiths, at a higher authority than God's holy scriptures, their lack of knowledge about conspiracy facts and real politic, and their complete ignorance of the true nature of our earth. I've had enough of their compromise, their weakness, their lame sermons which put people to sleep, their virtue signaling, their fear of facing any real persecution, and their willingness to let the quote-unquote secular atheist utterly trample over them. The atheists own all of the educational boards and teach their propaganda to every so-called Muslim and quote-unquote non-Muslim child here in the West. And now with the Toyota Corolla hoax, the atheist has successfully broken apart our communities and made us utter slaves to their government. Our so-called quote-unquote Muslim sons are a bunch of wannabe hood rat gangsters who vape, drink, smoke weed, and party like animals. And our so-called quote-unquote Muslim daughters are not much different. They have no interest in hearing about the word of God. They are all too busy YOLOing. This has all happened while the imams have been living very comfortably off of the hard-earned money of their community members in the donation bins.
As stated before, I personally am completely fed up with this. The mosques have had all of the support, funding, enfranchisement, and time of our communities, and have produced absolutely nothing. The atheist has made the so-called quote-unquote Muslim man his bitch. He has steamrolled him in every way possible. That is why I created Eyes Wide Open. This channel exists as a call to action for all of those strong believing men who trust in their Lord fully and refuse to compromise the Quran. It is time the true sons of Adam and the inheritors of the tremendous tradition, in other words the true Quranic Muslims, to set up something for themselves and fearlessly stand up against the madness that is going on in the world. What you see with my channel right now is only the beginning. These short videos I make in my car are all that I have time for right now, working a full-time job. I scribble these together while at work and make these videos while running errands. But you ain't seen nothing yet. If God should will, I have so much more in store for Eyes Wide Open. I want this to be a platform for the believers. Just a couple of things I have planned for this channel is, firstly, creating scholarly books, documentaries, and essays to arm you guys with the intellectual firepower for dealing with all of our enemies. Secondly, I would like Eyes Wide Open to be a center for heavy activism, public and street preaching, going to city hall, organizing protests, knocking doors, going to baseball, hockey, soccer, basketball, and other major sporting events and preaching to the people leaving the stadium, going to the totally failed mosques, synagogues, and churches and debating with their religious leaders, going to universities and debating the quote-unquote secular professors on their laughable so-called science, and much more. It's time the believers start to fight back and shake the cage of this disgusting system. My goal is to create a base for the believers. I want people to know of our name, that there are dedicated, zealous, and studious men who do not compromise the word of God, and we are ready to take action. If we keep waiting for our mosque to do something about the real problems of this world, then we will be waiting until Judgment Day. We need to create something now, from the ground up. With that being said, may God bless us in all of our endeavors and guide us every step of the way. If this sounds like something you are interested in, and if you want to be a part of the movement, then you can help me out. My Patreon and PayPal are linked in the description of every video. And, God willing, if enough generous believers decide to fund this platform, then I can quit my full-time job and look for something part-time, or, even better than that, leave employment completely, which will give me more hours in the day to do this work. I do not care to be rich. All of that stuff is vanity anyways. But the fact of the matter is, my wife and I need to eat and have a roof over our heads. So, if you wish to support the cause, then I thank you sincerely for that and promise to fight with might and main in the cause of God for the believers. If you are not able to, hey, then I totally understand. Find somebody else who needs that money and give it to them. Give it out of fear of your Lord and in dread of that great and terrible day which is coming to all of us. For all of the believers out there, the brothers and sisters who follow hard upon the truth, all I can say is much love to each and every one of you. May God reward you in this life and the hereafter. Praise goes to God alone. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Peace.